Hello everyone, so after the smashing success of my latest Mass Effect video, I thought now's the best time to make another video on a little less controversial subject, such as homosexuality and bisexuality and transgenders in latest Bioware titles. So what I want to do is primarily to address the complaints that a lot of people have about mostly Dragon Age Inquisition and that it will potentially be the same in Mass Effect Andromeda of Bioware pandering to feminists and social justice warriors and beating you over the head with political messages and that sort of thing. Specifically, making characters ugly on purpose, pushing on extreme sexual diversity in your cast and crew and all that. Now, I have already touched upon the ugliness in my previous video and generally I disagree with it. However, I want to point something in addition that I wasn't aware of in my uh, previous video and that was I knew that the main two characters of Mass Effect Andromeda are based on real people but I hadn't actually looked up who these people are and how they look. And when I did, well, the male one is pretty much spot on copy and the female one, well, needs work. So is that on purpose? Is that just blunder in animation? I don't know. But it's something worth pointing out. So moving on from the ugliness into the sexual diversity and all that. And now I really want to talk about Dragon Age Inquisition because we don't know how things are in Mass Effect Andromeda. And even if we know that there are a lot of like bisexual and homosexual and whatever characters, we still don't know how they're represented in the game and what they actually do and say. So I'm not gonna speculate. I'm just gonna talk about Inquisition. Now it is beyond doubt that they put on purpose as much sexual diversity within the cast of Inquisition as possible. I mean, you have, uh, what is it now, two straight men, two straight women, a gay man, a gay woman, a bisexual man, a bisexual woman, a trans man, and so on. Now, does it bother me? What is my take on this? Well, if you want me to give a yes or no question or whether or not I want, you know, every character to have a different sexual preference in my game and whatnot, I'd probably say no. But honestly, if one of the purposes of the developers is to make a game where a lot of the characters are sexually diverse, um, with the intention of perhaps improving the gamers or the, the audience's opinion of such characters in real life, even if that's the case, actually, I'm not necessarily opposed to that idea. I think it can be done properly. So if you sort of want to raise awareness for transgenders in real life by making a nice transgender character in game. I'm not by default against that, but it, you could fall into certain traps. And did Inquisition fall into these? Well, I gotta say mostly not. I was mostly not really bothered by any of the characters in Inquisition. Well, this video is gonna be kind of long, I suppose, but to not make it even longer, I'm just gonna focus on two, which in my opinion are the best and the worst representation, so you can probably understand my thoughts behind this. Um, and those are Dorian and Krem. So in my opinion, if you want to have a message in your game about diversity and whatnot, Dorian is how you do it, and Krem is how you don't do it. Now, before I go any further, I want to point out two things. First off, uh, obviously I have no issues with bisexuals or homosexuals or transgender people. If they are decent people, I will be friends with them in real life and so on. And the second thing is that these videos are completely unscripted. So if I make some mistakes or perhaps there are some scenes in the game that I'm not aware of and that change the perspective of things, let me know and I'll you know maybe respond to you in the comments or maybe even make a separate video. So, okay, let's talk about Dorian and why I think he is a good example. Now, first off, I like the character of Dorian. I like everything about him and the way he's presented. He has no, his personality, the way he looks, uh, his word usage, his voice acting are all very well put together to make a, a very lively character. So with all that said, we find out that he's gay very early on. And then the story progresses and we have conversations with him talking about various topics, um, often about Tevinter, the place he comes from. And at one point, he talks about the importance of genetic purity or something, you know, the methods of selection that Tevinter nobility, or at least his house, used to remain strong throughout the ages. And so every time after this point when I saw Dorian, I kept having this little question at the back of my mind of, well, did he not have any issues with the way his society works? And later on in his story, when his father shows up, you figure out that precisely because 
he is homosexual and he didn't want to play pretend for the rest of his life, his father was willing to do something terrible to him in order to change him, and that is why he left. And they have this, you know, emotional conversation where Dorian's like, fuck your legacy or whatever. Uh, th the point is that you get to feel something. You sympathize for what Dorian's been through and what he is going through when he meets his father. And perhaps you sympathize a little bit with the father as well, because he realized that he made a mistake. And this whole situation makes the characters uh, feel alive makes them relatable, it makes you think about issues, it makes you feel, uh, makes you emotional, and that is what I like from my story-driven RPGs. And if you want to have, um, you know, representation of gay characters in them, I think that is how you do it. At least that is what I like. And I also like the conclusion that he, through party banter, ends up in a relationship with Iron Bull, if you don't romance any of them, uh, because they fit very well together. They're both from, you know, they're Vince versus Kunari, basically, but they're all very strong individuals and they sort of ascend beyond the group mentality. And um, I think it's a good conclusion. And by the way, I also like uh, Iron Bull's representation and character. It's just, I think I like Dorian better and that's why I chose to talk about him. Now, let's talk about Krem and why I think that's not a good example. Spoiler alert, it's clearly not because he's transgender, you know. Transgender versus gay in this regard does not matter. They, they may as well have been reversed and I would have the same opinion. So the problem with Krem. Now, I will show you a video, which I actually think I've done videos of my own with these scenes, but I'm too lazy to find them and I found them in one of uh, video games sophistry videos. So I'm just going to steal his video and put it here. You can check his channel. So let's see it. My name was just this series of numbers. We all give each other nicknames under the cune. They ever wear shirts under the cune, Chief? Or do they just run around binding their breasts like that? It's a harness, Krem. Yes, for your pillowy man bosoms. Let me know if you need help binding. You could really chisel something out of that overstuffed look. Wait, are you? I didn't realize. You didn't? Well, great. Now we can all talk about it. In Kunadar, Krem would be an Akunathlak. That's what we call someone born one gender, but living like another. And Kunari don't treat those Akun people any differently than a real man. They are real men. Just like you are. Maybe your people aren't so bad after all. I'd like to know more about Krem. He's a good soldier, and a better second in command. The troops need someone to complain to when I'm being a hard ass. He's good for that. You don't have any problems with him being a woman? He's not a woman. Look, you and I have to walk carefully so we don't accidentally break the furniture or the elves. We're probably not the best people to go around deciding what's normal. Krem's a good man. I don't give a nug's ass that it's a little harder for him to piss standing up. Now, there is a major difference between what we've just saw and Dorian's case. Here, it does feel a little like they're beating us over the head with, uh, you know, Krem is a real man and shouldn't be treated differently and who are we to decide what's normal and all that. And the game does get a little bit uh, defensive, a little bit annoying. For example, the only thing we say is, so you're... Uh, and we don't even finish the sentence, and that instantly triggers this conversation between Iron Bull and Krem, which I find kind of silly, because there is no way that Krem doesn't know about how Kunari society treats people like him. I mean, they've been friends, they've saved each other's lives, Krem is his second in command, they have been through so much together, and I just don't buy it that He's now just telling him all this right in front of me there, listening. So it kind of feels like the game is afraid to give us the option to ask the questions, and instead Krem is asking the questions on our behalf. I mean, I may be reading too much into this, but regardless, it's just... I, I don't like it. And then on the following conversation, it's the same thing. You, you, you barely mention that he's different, and then... Bull goes, no, no, he's not a woman, you know, you're different, I'm different, who are we to judge what's normal, he's a good man, and so on. And, yeah, I 
don't want the game to tell me these things. I want to see him in action, see him in a dramatic situation, kind of like Dorian. Make me think about it, make me feel for it, make me go to this conclusion naturally that he is in fact an alright person and that he is in fact normal and all that. Um, you have to find a way to show it to us in a conversation with him or maybe observing him handle a situation or something. But don't just have Bull telling us. And now I should be editing this part heavily because I'm trying to think of an example of a better way to handle Krem. And, um, well, let's, let's assume that something similar to what happens to Dorian happens to Krem, but not with a family member. Um, okay, so here's the thing. Let's say that we walk into the tavern, a similar scene plays out, but we see Krem with a woman. He's like flirting with her and she's flirting back. So they're having a thing. Uh, and then he does or says something or maybe maybe one of the chargers says something or does something and she realizes that Krem is not, quote, normal. You know, she didn't know before, but now she all of a sudden does. And she goes nuts, right? And by the way, she's like a completely random NPC. So she goes crazy. She starts shouting. She starts like calling him names and whatnot. And you can tell that that's affecting him. Now, you don't have to present him like someone who's weak. You don't have to make him cry or something. Just uh, make him look tough and reasonable. Maybe he tries to calm her down or something, but it's not working. And, uh, you know, he's voiced by Jennifer Hale, right? And if that's true, she can pull an amazing performance. You can have an emotional scene. But ultimately, whatever he does or says, it's not working. And suddenly Iron Bull jumps in and like calls her a bitch or something. Maybe threatens to throw her out. Or maybe throws her out, actually. And then we all sit at the table and have a little bit of a conversation. Maybe Krem's feeling down, upset of, of what has happened. And nobody knows what to say. And then Iron Bull jumps in again. But this time, it makes more sense. And he can say similar things... Like, for example, he can make that joke. You know, Krem, you may have issues pissing while standing up, and I may have issues crushing furniture and elves while I walk, but, I mean, who who is she to judge us, right? Who is she to tell what's normal and what's not? And, like, maybe it will be funny, and he'll cheer up and laugh, maybe others will laugh. Uh, and then he can go back to the first conversation in the actual game and say... Um, you know, remember these people from Kunari Society, whatever the name was, instead of saying, oh, did you know that they so-and-so? Because he should know. So he'll say, remember those? Remember how awesome they are? Maybe he'll mention some feats that they've done or the way uh, the Kunari Society treats them. He'll compare Krem to them. He'll say, look, you're, you're a real man, just like them. And like punch him on the shoulder and he'll feel better. And then maybe you'll get to say something, learn a little bit more about Krem, about how he felt about this whole situation and just just uh, do something like that give us some more give us some context let us figure out on our own that he is in fact normal like iron bull says acts like a real man and all that stuff that the game wants us to believe make us believe it or at least try um and then I think that scene you get in the Trespasser DLC, where Cole is uh, matchmaking Krem with the woman, with the singer, it'll then feel more like a natural conclusion to the Krem subplot, because you can say to yourself, oh look, it turns out that Krem found someone who appreciates him for who he really is, and he deserved that, right? That is what I kind of wanted from the game, but didn't get in terms of Krem. Now, to not be completely negative about Cole's representation, there is actually one or two scenes, I think it was one conversation, uh, towards the very end, where he mentions his family and um, how they suspected what he was, and then also that he doesn't want to change, provided that he could with magic. And by change, I mean change his body into a body of a woman. So that is on the right track, but that happens, at least in my game, it happened after the ones I was discussing in this video, so at that point it was, in a way, too late. Uh, and I think that's it. And finally, the game is really big, so if there are any scenes that I have missed and can potentially change my mind and help present things in a different way, please let me know. I'll make sure to respond to you. So I hope 
after all that I've said, you managed to figure out the point that I was trying to get across. I probably didn't articulate it uh, as well as I imagined, but that is in general my opinion. I'm not going to strongly oppose a pro-trans message or whatever the game is trying to convey if it's conveyed in a proper way. If it doesn't feel uh, forced, if, it's, if it flows naturally, I'm going to accept it. And I'm not going to blame the developers for doing it. And I think Inquisition mostly does it all right, but needs improvement. As for Andromeda, well, we'll have to wait and see. So about two-thirds of the complaints that I've seen about social justice propaganda and whatnot, I tend to disagree or not care about, but about one-third are, I think, legit. So tell me what you think. Hope this video gets more likes than dislikes. Uh, and that was it. Until next one, stay tuned and be good.